Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us at our Brooksby campus virtual open evening tonight. I'm here with our construction and joinery lecturers, so I'm going to hand over to them um, to introduce themselves. If you have any questions at all during this Q&A, please pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get around to them all for you this evening. Right, I'll hand you over to David. Hi, I'm Dave Kirkby. I'm a lecturer in construction. I teach predominantly uh, bricklaying. Um, been, been here for a few years now. And I look forward to seeing everybody in September. Hi, on, um, my name's Lee. Uh, I teach carpentry and joinery level one and level two. Hi, Paul. I'm Paul. Oh, sorry, I'm Paul, and I teach the level one construction at the moment. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, just while we wait for some questions to come in, I'll kick us off with um, some of our frequently asked questions. Um, so one of the main questions we get actually about the construction and joinery courses is uh, what kit do they need to buy before joining us on a course um, and do they need to buy any like uniform or anything before they join us in September? Do you want me to start to kick off? Yeah, good. Can yeah. Do. Uh, what, we, no, what we ask for is safety footwear uh, and if you're in construction, in the construction section, whether it be the multi skills or brickwork, it's some overclothes, trousers and a shirt. Because when you go into those areas, it's dusty, dirty, and the, that dust and dirt is not allowed to go outside the workshops. We, what we tend to do is try to make it as, as real life as possible. If you work in somebody's house, you don't trample somebody's in through somebody's carpet with your dirty boots, your uh, dirty dust and stuff like that. So we ask for uh, work, safety work, work boots and some over trousers and uh, an over shirt. Everything else we, we provide uh, for uh, PPE, that's not a problem. So we, we, we're happy with that one. Joinery might be a bit different. Um, joinery is pretty much the same, isn't it? Uh, work trousers, a top that you don't mind getting dirty, uh, steel toe cap boots is, is essential. Um, and as for tools, we supply all the tools, but it, you know, if you do, there's no problem with you bringing your own if you want to bring your own, as, but as long as it, it, you bring it, it, it's at your risk. Yeah. If yeah, something the, happens to it. The only other things I'll say is just normal pens and paper, a notebook for yeah. taking notes. Uh, that's true. And yeah. a, short yeah. three meter, a short three metre tape measure would probably yeah. be the most useful thing you could bring. Yeah, yeah. true. Lovely, thank you. Um, yeah, because that seems to be one we often get questions about, particularly over the summer, just as people are thinking about starting. Um, so uh, maybe we could just quickly go through um, what kind of facilities we've got at the college um, and what kind of workshops we've got. Um, and maybe we could briefly talk about what students are doing at the moment when they can't come into college and how, how that um, process has worked with teaching students from home. Yeah, do you want me to start? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, with the workshops, we've got uh, three workshops. I, I'm in the uh, three workshops. I'm in the middle one uh, with uh, Brick Lane. Uh, we've got an outside work area as well, which uh, is very, very good. Uh, gives you a real uh, lot of area to work in. We've got an indoor area for the Brick Lane um, uh, activities you have to undertake. Uh, what we're doing at the moment is we're doing a lot of theory work as well. As you know, we can't do anything practical wise, but we're learning the different types of types of materials. We're talking about bricks this week. The level one is talking about bricks. We're talking about blocks. Next week we're going on to uh, different types of wall structures. And what we're doing, we're working remotely through Teams. Uh, we're having sessions on Teams, uh, discussions uh, about different aspects of, of construction activities. And then we're setting them a uh, bit of assignments, a bit of worksheets, which have to be handed back in. And we're looking then to do some formative assessments on what students have learnt, which we can keep on record for later date as well. And uh, we've always got access to, we always say, yeah, come back to us, any issues, come back to us, don't struggle, always be able to come back to us and, and talk to us all the while. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got three workshops, haven't we? So we've got the brick workshop. We've got a, well, in fact, you could say four, because we've got the brick workshop and the outside area that you use, haven't we? We've got uh, a joinery shop um, and we've got a multi-trade area and a level two area where, where we do the predominantly the level two course. Um, 
and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for workshops, isn't it? Yeah, got a machinery yeah. shop, haven't we? Using machinery, machinery. Yeah, we've got a machine yeah. shop. Yeah, um, but we've got, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, and that's it. Unless they're subject to change over this summer. <laughs> we like to use part of the grounds as well uh, to do some work on the grounds. Um, anything we can, we can actually use, piece of the land somewhere. Bit of setting out, uh, especially the construction um, and uh, brickland side. Do some physical setting out of buildings. So we use a bit of grass area. We don't we don't let that out to norm, to everybody, but uh, we don't tell everybody about that. So we're going out putting some pegs in the grounds, and uh, again told off by the states people. <laughs> um, we've had a couple of questions actually. Yeah. Bear with me while I find them. Um, is there support available to help pay for the uniform? I don't know if um, you know anything about that, but I can pop a link in the chat to our bursary information as well. Yes, there's a bursary, um, and that's uh, that will come through the um, various channels that will. Yeah, so I've popped a link in the chat. So if you are interested in looking at that, we have a couple of different bursaries available um, that um, students tend to use for pay paying for equipment and stuff like that. Um, and then the other question we've had is, um, are the construction and joinery courses all 100% practical or is there some classroom work um, and sort of how would that be split out? Yeah, um, they're all different, are they? Do you want to? Yeah, it depends what course you're on, really. Um, there is an element of theory in, in all courses. Um, if you're doing one of the level two courses, it's pretty much 50 50, I'd say. Um, if you're on one of the level ones, um, perhaps 80 percent practical, 20 percent theory. Um, yeah, so anything other than uh, if you're on a level two, it's general, generally 50 50 split between theory and practical. Anything under a level two, it's it's perhaps 80 percent practical, do you think? Yeah, I'll, something I'll like that, isn't I'll it? Roughly one, yeah. a split like that. So there is yeah. theory, obviously, involved in all the courses. Yeah. Um, yeah. Practical assessments as well, and theory assessments as well. Um, each unit has some sort of, well, it's got a practical assessment and a theory assessment to it. It could be a situation where you've got a few questions, or you've got a multiple choice question paper online, multiple choice question paper. But for level level two, a lot of multiple choice question papers. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, also what sort of eats into the time a bit is also uh, students need to be aiming to get good GCSE grades because otherwise they'll be taking GCSEs or functional skills because it's ongoing. So you'll be doing maths and English up to um, grade four. So that will uh, affect the time that you do some of the uh, practical and theory sessions as well. Yeah. Yeah. Vital. English and maths are vital in our, our industry and people think about English and maths. Maths, you calculate the materials. I'm, I, this week I've, I've set um, students work on how to work out how many blocks and bricks are in uh, brick walls. Uh, lots of measurements, but also English. Uh, prior to Christmas we did a lot of work on English, but communicating to each other, communicating to me, communicating to uh, clients, etc. So it, it's vital that we get those, those uh, skills. Uh, under his belt as much as the, the, the practical skills as well they're, they're vital but I say you, what we do is if you get GCSEs get the best GCSEs you can, you can get uh, you, you won't have to do them in, in college again yeah definitely um, we were talking about that a minute ago in the apprenticeships Q&A about um, obviously with the exams being cancelled it can be quite a a testing time for everyone but but don't worry if you did for any reason not get your grades you can do them alongside your full-time course so that's always a good option as well um so someone's asked uh, can you go straight on to level three site joinery um, and what grades do you need the, there is no requirement grade grades wise um although obviously uh, by by the time you get to a level three hopefully you'll have uh, upskilled yourself to it um it's a level th a, a c isn't it but i can never think what the level is what level is four. that seven six four is that all it is a four yeah of course it is um but no you can't go straight on to a level three obviously the clues in the name a level a level three i think if you started on a level three you'd have missed out quite a bit of information before you got to that point 
I think um, it's the hand skills as well, isn't it? And skills and the knowledge. Yeah, it's that's yeah. the thing. It's that it's you've got to gain the hand skills before you get to that point. Um, ideally, we we like people to start on a level one, work up to the level two, and then and then obviously the level three. Yeah, Lovely. I think that answers the question. I'll also put the link um, in the chat to the actual course page on the website, and that's got a bit more information about entry requirements. I think the thing that comes confusing there is people get good grades at school, good academic grades, but it's more about the hand skills and uh, getting your hand skills to a good enough standard to be able to join in the courses. Another thing I'd say with a level three is by the time you get to a level three, realistically, you should be looking at having being on an apprenticeship and getting into the trade that way realistically. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, it can get confusing, I suppose, because some of our courses, for example, if you're looking at animal care, you can go straight onto a level three up with your GCSEs. But um, as Paul was saying, because these are so much more hands on courses, you will need a little bit more practice in there. Yeah, you'll, beforehand. You'll, you'll find the same with like things like ag engineering and motor vehicles. They'll have the same same sort of criteria as us, really. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, someone asked, are there many jobs available in joinery? Um, actually, we've had a few questions about sort of different pathways that you could go. So, what careers do students tend to go on? Are there a lot of jobs in that area? Yes, there are at the moment because um, even though there's a pandemic on, house building is actually going through the roof at the moment. So I think once the pandemic finishes, there's going to be quite a lot of house building. It's not really slowed down um, at all. Also, there's a lot of large commercial um, projects as well. So a lot of people just think of house building construction, but there's a commercial arm. So we've got things like HS2, uh, things like that coming online. Um, so yeah, there's lots of good good trades and good money to be made in the trade, really. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. There's, uh, there's a report come out today with the um, local authority talking about um, construction on, on the rise at the moment. It did dip a little bit in the last uh, lockdown, but now it's on the, on the rise and they're looking for uh, more skilled people coming into the industry. Uh, with the Brexit as well, it's another issue. So there's, there's, there's going to be a tremendous amount of work out there. As Paul said, HS2, there's lots of uh, environmental issues at the moment. And also we're talking about restoration projects, um, conservation projects. There's, uh, everything, there's that much work going on. It's, it's just crazy at the moment with um, uh, and a lack of skill, skilled personnel. We need those skilled personnel. Yes, thank you. Um, so uh, one more question. Uh, would these courses prepare me for an apprenticeship? I guess we touched on that a little bit earlier. Do you get a lot of students who tend to progress onto apprenticeships? I've had three this year. I've had three level one bricklayers came along. Uh, well, my, my group had four um, Christmas. I had three out of the group have actually now gone into apprenticeships and they're now uh, enjoying life as an apprentice, apprentice bricklayers. So, yeah. They're a, they're a good, yeah. Sorry, they're a good grounding for people to get into the trade and get a taste to see what trade they want to do. Also, if they want to, if they know what trade they want to do and get that basic bit of um knowledge because employers quite like it if uh, most apprentices if they've done a year at college then they get an idea of you know the students commitment uh, the work ethic they'll talk to the tutors and stuff and then more likely to go forwards but again with apprenticeships slightly difficult at the moment but the best advice is you've just got to try and hunt around to um, find opportunities really locally to you so builders merchants are good places to ask and things like that for leads for companies yes certainly. um so uh, what i'll do in a moment as well is i'll pop the link to the national apprenticeship database in the chat so if you are interested you can have a little, little look at those uh, what's on offer um again with apprenticeships someone's asked what apprenticeships do we offer yeah um well at the minute at brooksby we don't do we they're actually no. being yeah, yeah. being run from Stevenson's College because obviously we we merged with Stevenson's College. Our apprenticeship uh, division has gone to Stevenson's. So um, at, at the minute at Brooks be none. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you've got interest in apprenticeships, you can contact the Stevenson campus uh, and they can refer you through. But basically, I think there's brickwork, joinery. Uh, I think they've got civil engineering on there as well. So um, 
you can always put an inquiry through to that account. Yeah. Yeah, I've popped their email address in the chat. Um, so if you want to get in touch with the apprenticeships team who work across all of um, our sites, but um, who will be able to tell you about the, anything at Stevenson campus as well, um, get in touch with them via email. Come on, hear you, Meg. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I muted myself. Um, so we haven't got any questions currently in the chat, but I just wanted to ask a frequently asked question that we get quite a lot. Um, and that is, um, what? how is it assessed? So are there exams? Is it mainly coursework? Because um, I know some students prefer one type of learning over the other. Yeah, it's, it's a mixture, as we said earlier, that, that um, with, a, with a, it's practical where you have to do a practical assessment, uh, then there'll be a link to that will there be some some type of theory assessment as well job knowledge assessment and that could be a few questions it could be an online exam uh, there's a lot of health and safety exams as well what we ch what we want to do is uh, we link into what we call the CSS card which is the, the site safety card uh, there's, there's health and safety exams to do for that uh, so it's, it's, it's a combination of both so we can expect to do both theory and practical uh, assessments. Lovely, thank you. Um, maybe we can talk about um, obviously pre-COVID, um, what kind of trips we um, have taken students on and um, going out and about to different sites. Yeah, so um, we're basically at um, industry visits. So usually we go out to uh, industry trade shows that's relevant to the course. So sort of the joinery show, the building uh, exhibition, things like that. Um, also, we pick up. We've been in the past. We picked up heritage work um, with um, heritage work in a few places um, like that. And so, anything really that's linked to the trade, really, um, that we can fit into the course to make it interesting and to show students that you know the industry they're going to get into and the jobs available for them. Yeah. Yeah, and they're not just locally. Either. We're, yeah, we've been to Coventry, Birmingham. Uh, went to Nottingham a couple of years, as Paul says, we did some work on the home pay point hall, did some practical work on that uh, through English Heritage and that was really, really good. And all the stuff we do, it, it, it's it's really, really, it gives an insight into what's happening. Site visits have been really excellent. From the moment you walk on site to the moment you walk off, you're there for a, a, a long period of time looking at different things, different aspects, housing estates, etc, etc. So we do, yeah, we, we do try to do a lot of things in the year just to give a bit of insight into what the industry is all about. Oh, yep, lovely, just making sure I wasn't muted again. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. Um, I do, I've seen a lot of the photos of, of students <laughs> on trips and they absolutely look like they're having a great time. Um, someone has asked, do you oh, staff. Get, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always nice to get out and about, isn't it? Um, yeah. Someone has asked, yeah. do you get any girls on the courses? We've got a few yes. of yeah. Yeah. Um, last year I had one on the construction, that one construction. She was outstanding. She was absolutely fantastic. She's now she's actually gone to Leicester College to do painting, decorating, and she will, you know, will be brilliant. And we've had a few in joinery as well. Uh, yeah. Over the years, yeah. I know we'll yeah, so one, one or two. Not, just on that, really, it's not, it, you know, construction. It, is changing and there's a lot more um lot more females in construction uh, lots of jobs that are um, quite easily doable within construction and it's a good trade to be in so if you're interested in coming coming along then just come and join in yeah 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 definitely um it's great yeah more than marius it's, it's great <laughs> Um, I think so I've got an article somewhere that. about some of our female students, so I'll try and link that into the chat. Yeah, um, there's a, uh, we did chat. something last year on two of the girls who were, who were with us and the reasons that, what they wanted to do and the reasons we were there for. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Someone's asked how much time does a level one joinery timetable allow for participating in the rugby programme? Um, I'm not sure if there's actually a um, rugby programme that runs alongside it anymore, but I know we do a lot of enrichment rugby and um, so how I guess it's how many days of the week and how much time do they get to do sort of extracurricular stuff on side? Um, 
Well, at the, at the minute, the level one joinery is running on a, a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday. Um, the Monday, it depends if you've got English and maths, because uh, we have a couple of shorter days because uh, anyone who has to go to English and math, uh, maths goes to those lessons. So on a Monday, if you didn't have English and maths, then you finish at uh, quarter past 12. On a Tuesday, it's a full day till half, from half nine till half past four. And on a Wednesday, uh, it's half nine till quarter past 12 again. Um, but obviously, if you've got English and maths, then you're supposed to go to those lessons. So, uh, yeah, so it depends really on your grades as to how as to how much free time you've got, I suppose. Yeah. It also yeah. re revolves around the, what the timetable is as well from September. Yeah, depend on they well. may change. Uh, yeah, these are subject to change, aren't they? I can only comment on what it what our timetable is currently. Um, right, so next question. Um, someone's asked how do they apply and can they apply for both construction and joinery? Um, would you prefer them to apply for one course or can they apply for a few different courses? I personally say apply for anything, anything. apply for anything or we'll do the interviews and then you make, make the choice at the end of the day. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, you will make the choice and we make the choice as well because it's got to be for both both parties uh, it's a suitable for it and we've also got a six week uh, um, leeway up to half term people change over so that's not a problem but I would apply for as, as many as you want and you make you make the decision and uh, which way we want to go talk to us it's always about talking to us what what we offer what we do how we do things and then the day what, what you're suitable for yeah definitely i mean sometimes it takes people a little bit longer to decide which which course yeah. they want to do but i mean hopefully we'll get to do some on-site open events later in the year that might help yeah. choices as yeah. well um, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see <laughs> can't make any promises at the moment on that side of things but um yeah i mean that can help as well um i guess it also helps if you're not sure maybe to get some work experience in in both of the areas that you're interested in um, right, let's have a look. So, um, sorry, I'm just looking at the questions. Um, we've covered a lot of them actually. Um, can we just um, quickly briefly touch on additional learning support um, and if students tend to have um, support in the, in the workshop or in the classroom and, and how that works? Yeah, so basically if you've if you've got an EACP educational healthcare plan, then obviously you'll be assessed for support. And if you've got any other needs, you'll be assessed by the support group. Um, and then they'll decide whether you sort of get group support or one to one support in lessons. Um, obviously, you get support from the tutors. We all try and give as much support and guidance as we can. Uh, um, but it's sort of with, you know, very inclusive. Nobody's sort of left out but support can be put into place, yeah. Lovely, yeah, oops, sorry. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I know a lot of people often ask about that when we're um, at school events and stuff like that. So um, I'll just briefly say as well, because someone asked about how to apply, um, you can apply through the website. I've put the uh, link in the chat, but um, we don't really have a specific deadline, but we say if you can apply sooner rather than later, that's good for you, because um, it just means you can get your interview done and get your offer in your hands before um, before any exams or any any coursework and, and stuff like that that you're doing for school. Um, so it's just easier to get, get your offer sorted before summer and um, but we do interview throughout the summer as well so if you are finding um that it takes you a bit longer to make a decision on what to apply for that's not a problem either um let's see oh actually i think we've come to the end sorry about that <laughs> i lost just, track of time just, just one, <laughs> sorry yeah go ahead sorry, Meg, just one thing on. um so it's important that if you are applying on the website or you, when you get to interview that um and when you we're interviewing you that make sure that you do declare any support or any uh, extra time you've had at school or readers or anything like that because uh, it needs to be declared at the beginning because we can't put it into place later it's quite difficult okay that's a really good tip so there is a um, box on the application form that you can tick um, and then the admissions team will make sure that we send the correct forms um, to the tutors for the interview as well 
Lovely. So thank you very much for joining us, everyone. And thank you to our lecturers for um, taking the time to talk to you this evening. Uh, if you have any further questions at all, please do get in touch. Um, all the links are on the virtual open day page and all the email addresses that you should need. Um, so, yes, we hope you enjoy the rest of the event um, and we hope we'll see you in the future at an on site event. Yeah, OK, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining everybody. Stay safe. Cheers all.